I know I'm in my like strangely lit living room that's like really bright, except right where I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, turn around, find a good spot in the room. Well, I mean, I've been doing this. Here, that's a little bit better. Yay. Yay. The marinas are here. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Yay. Is that sparkly top, Ronnie? Yeah. Well, you know, mm. I'm doing the whole, I'm in the Liza Minnelli phase of my life now. <laughs> Keeping it sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Um, oh, man. Good to see you all. It's, it is really good to see everybody. <laughs> So good it's been a long everybody. time. It has been so long. I actually went on Sunday yeah. down to Gasworks with Katrina and we watched uh, the band Reposado play and um, it was great. Wow. It was like, I'm just gonna throw, I'm, I'm vaccinated. I'm just gonna throw myself out into the experiment. I just went, I went out to dinner for the first time. I sat outside, but I still went out to dinner and I was like, I'm just gonna, like, let's see what happens. So. I'm just excited to see everybody. And it was awesome. really nice to see you as a follow-up this week. It's been so long since I've like talked to any of you. I see you all on the face webs and <laughs> the TikToks and the Twitches. And um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like everybody on the beaches doing stuff <laughs> still, which is great, you know? So why don't, you know, I know, Marina, you have a big show coming up.
my name is Marina Alvero, and it's an honor and a pleasure being featured at the Blood Moon Orchestra. Uh, I'm a big fan of the format and the project itself. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a musician that basically what I love about music is actually improvising. So the whole idea of getting some people on stage and improvising whatever it is and plus with lyrics with something that amazes me it's something i'm i'm really really proud to be count in the family as nice. as one so really 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 happy <clears throat> oh careful because it's my phone sorry see i got a call mm -hmm. anyway sorry about that um projects that i have coming up i do have next week for me um on may 29th i have uh, my first gig with my trio um after nice all the COVID uh, frozen times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, with Jeff Johnson and Devon Lewis. Nice. I'm excited because um, I've been doing lots of live streams and other situations. I haven't been actually playing my music that much. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing it solo, a lot of solo piano for Wayward and I've done Usual Jazz Festival. I played uh, triple solo. Mm -hmm. So I played three different instruments and I also played solo for the Seattle Improvised Music Festival. So I've been doing a lot of solo nice. and it's cool. Um, I've been learning how to record and make videos and all these things on my Patreon. I'm producing quite a bunch, but I'm nice. looking forward to actually play with my band nice. um, and seeing Jeff Johnson, who, you know, it's been a year and a half since we played together. I'm really excited. Nice. And I wrote some new music. So that's going to happen at the town hall. It's a ticket event. You can watch it for a few days after the live stream, but you have nice. to register and pay if you are older than 22 and it's free for younger people so oh, anyway yeah that's what i have coming up and i hope that you know hopefully soon enough uh, we will be back in person but that one is still online nice and do you have any music releases coming up at all well i'm releasing every month new music on patreon and that's really exclusive it's only for people who are there right now and because of covid I, it's like a flat rate you pay what you can and everybody gets the same Mm -hmm. um, in terms of content uh, and I'm releasing I call them mini concerts and it's always something exclusive and new that I, I record here in my studio I have you know my my worldly my piano my drums nice. my computer um, my vibes over there and nice. so basically I've been playing different instruments playing cajon playing drums playing me with myself and Marina again it's been really yeah. fun and all this music some of them might see the real light of our in form of a release on Bandcamp, but now I'm really happy with my little crowd of super loyal supporters on Patreon. Totally. Um, and I'm releasing so many music, only a few people see them, but I have a huge archive from this last year on Vimeo on private links. Nice. So it's it's cool. And for now I'm doing that. Yeah. And nice. I keep it this way for now. Yeah. So what is your Patreon? Can you say it? Where can they it's find, where can we find it? It's patreon.com. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Patreon.com slash Marina Albero. I only use one A in between Marina and Albero. Marina Albero. Um, you'll find me. Uh, just Google my name on um, on any search on, on any search engine, and you're gonna find me. You know, it's all out there for sure. Nice. And uh, you can always, you know, drop me a line through my website. I don't have any manager or anything, so it's it's a one person. <laughs> A business so you can reach me easily through my website as for whatever you need my cd it's uh, on sale on my website on Bandcamp. so it's 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 easy it's uh, an independent musician so you just knock at my door whatever web or profile you find on nice. the website listen I, lo I love it all business i love it how are you doing <laughs> how has it been being at home for the last year in my case it's been beautiful because i had a chance to enjoy my my grown-up kids Mm -hmm. who were planning on being other places and said and actually my daughter was living in new york city for a couple of years already so it's been nice having them around and now they are about to probably fly away again and it's, it's it's just been a quiet time where i had no gigs i've been cooking for them with them walking um it's like i had a really small microcosmos but mm -hmm. really uh, surrounded by love and music the beginning was hard harder than i expected Mm -hmm. And then once I got along with the situation and I started finding ways of surviving and like not really crashing into desperation, um, because, you know, the whole trade, you're, it's kind of your, the meaning of your life, it's, it's in jeopardy all of a sudden. And like, oh, my God, they don't even need me anymore. They don't need performance or live music. 
And right. I don't want to believe that. Uh, mm -hmm. One proof of that is the live stream and Patreon and how people keep connecting and supporting uh, musicians. But also, I like that nothing can actually sub the live experience, the music happening with the audience, the energy that we gather and and kind of we handle together and enjoy and transform. That's something that hasn't been replaced. And so I'm kind of looking forward for what happens now, how we appreciate music and how people appreciate music, the audience, because I think musicians also, we have to rethink about how we treat the business, how we give ourselves, how we interact with the audience. I think it's, it's been a beautiful moment to take a step back and not feeling the pressure of having to have gigs, having to be up there, having to, it's been cool. Now, what do we do with that? That's gonna be interesting. And me personally, I do have my, you know, I wanna have a calmer life. Um, I just hit the forties. So to me right now, like I, I'm ready to bring to my life some of this thinking of slow and calm and things more thoughtfully, maybe less stuff and um, more meaningful, which mm -hmm. has been a little bit, the, I would say the highlight of this year, less and, and more meaningful. Nice. And also, too, working towards the future, like working less and making more money, making For example, just as much yeah, money, that, right? Mm -hmm. Like the idea, I feel like mm -hmm. that's been a common thread that I'm hearing with everybody that I've been talking to. Um, Ronnie, I'm sure you've experienced that. Marina, you've experienced that in some way. Have What do you think, Ronnie? Absolutely. Oh, should I introduce myself? <laughs> yeah, totally.
I'm Ronnie Weatherby uh, from the band Champagne Honeybee, where I'm the singer, songwriter, arranger, and band leader. Uh -huh. Although, as Marina was saying, uh, since, ever since the pandemic hit, I've been doing everything solo, um, including some live stream events, some virtual events where, you know, like this, where I've submitted videos and things. Um, to be added to a program, but it's all been solo. I actually haven't seen my band in over a year and I really miss them a lot, but it's just such a big band that it hasn't really been safe to see everyone mm -hmm. at, at uh, all at the same time, uh, but I'm hoping soon we mm -hmm. will. And I've had a few recording sessions on my full length album that I'm still working on. It's been like five years now, but uh, still working on it, still bringing in musicians just a little at a time um, to get that done. Um, but I liked what you were asking about kind of reassessing yeah. uh, the career as a gigging musician. I will say this, this pandemic has absolutely made me reassess my priorities as a musician and, and also just as a human being, you know, it kind of has helped me see what's really important in my life, both personally and professionally. Um, and I think that is going to help when gigs start back up again for me to be a little more choosy and not just take everything. I mean, I already was kind of on that path of, you know, I need to know what my time is worth. Um, you know, I'm not going to do those gigs that cost me money anymore. <laughs> Goodness knows I did. I did enough years of that, um, but I, yeah, I, I decided, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be different, you know, I'm going to have to make sure that it's worth not only my time, or not just my money, but time, and my energy, you know, and my mental health, mental health was a really um, big deal over the pandemic as well, I had a many months where music was honestly the furthest thing from my mind, because I was just trying to get through the day to day to adjust with working from home to, you know, trying to take care of my own health and safety and those of my loved ones. And so, you know, I, I it's been a real personal journey. It took several months for me to even want to write music again um, after COVID had started. But now uh, I have to admit, I'm, I'm feeling a little better. I'm, I'm also vaccinated now, um, but I haven't had a public gig yet with an audience. Um, quite yet, but I'm, mm -hmm. I am excited to still be part of, you know, virtual and live streaming performances and um, hope to hope to see my band again <laughs> in the not so distant future because I, I do miss them and I do miss the magic that we make together. But I, I'll have to say having to do things on my own, especially learning to do a little recording at home by myself has been quite an experience as well. I've actually done some things that I never knew I could do. I didn't think I'd be able to write and produce and record a song all by myself at home. Um, and achieving that has really felt like quite the accomplishment. So, so there's been some, I won't lie, there's been some ugly moments, but there have been some really beautiful moments as well. Nice, right <laughs> on. I, I agree. I mean, I think the first six months I was like running on like this manic pace I gave up, but I also quit drinking, quit smoking and quit you. coffee. Right. And so like, I think I hit a wall at one point and just let myself hit that wall. And then coming back out of it, I think it probably took me to like October, November to feel like anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Other I than agree. like, what I mean, the fuck? <laughs> I mean, I, at the risk of sounding super dramatic, I, I honestly just thought, because I, I do have a very poor immune system already, yeah. I thought, man, if I get COVID, I'm going to die. You know, yeah. I actually, for the first few months, I thought, man, I'm like, this album I'm making, it's never going to get done. I'm probably, you know, I mean, I, I'll admit it was pretty dark uh, yeah. for a while. I thought, you know, yeah. I don't know if I'm ever going to perform with my band again. I don't know if I'm ever going to get my album out. I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to live through the summer, you know, so I, yeah. it, it was pretty dark. And, and like I said, it does make you reassess a lot of things. I, I ended up spending a lot more time with my family, even though we didn't live in the same household, we were all kind of a bubble together because mm -hmm. they stayed in their homes and I'd go and I'd stay in my home working from home and we'd visit each other. So spent a lot more time with my family. Um, so I have to tell you the fact that, you know, a year after it started, you know, having it be going as well as it was. I mean, if you would have told me that last spring, 
think mm-hmm. it would have helped me a lot if he said, Ronnie, you know what? In a year from now, you're going to be making music on your own at home. You're going to be vaccinated. You're not going to be dead, girl. <laughs> you know, you're, you're fine. You took your precautions. You, you know, did what you yeah. needed to do to protect yourself and your family. You know, you didn't like, you, you didn't cause any kind of chaos or anything. So I don't know. It just, but it, you know, it took a while. It took a while to get past that mere like survival kind of feeling. Um, so I have to admit, you know, I, and, and the funny thing is I did do a couple of little live stream things here and there, but they're kind of a blur now. Like I, mm-hmm. you know, it, they were kind of, I was kind of on autopilot. <laughs> a couple right. of those things. Right. But now, now I feel like I can actually feel artistic again and can feel creative and that's okay. I guess, that, oh, you know, that was another thing. I was feeling a little guilty. Like, why should I ask people to look at my art or pay for my art when people are losing their jobs and they're worried about their health, things like that. Like I I was trying to kind of find where, you know, where is even the importance of my music right now, which now I understand. And I know I've gotten through hard times with music and other people's Mm -hmm. music and my own that I know Mm -hmm. that it is important. But at that time I was like, who am I? Like really, (laughs) who who am I to ask ask people for something that I need? Exactly. Right. And especially since the other thing is, you know, I, I still had a full time job. I've been working this whole time, um, you know, still for the government at home. And so that was another thing. I, I wanted to make sure that that space online, especially spaces where, where people were asking for donations and things, mm-hmm. that that was left for people who didn't have a full time work from home situation. So right. that, that was another thing, too. I was trying to leave that space um you know for the folks who who needed it more than I did so right so yeah sorry that's a really long ramble <laughs> oh there's Eric hi there's Eric <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of speaking of Eric you you guys just got engaged right we did yeah, yeah. yes we did <laughs> yeah so Katrina and I will be sisters officially nice that'll be rad <laughs> that'll be rad Bye, honey. <laughs> hey, that'll be fun. See, and actually, we do want to wait till uh, after the pandemic is over to get married, so you know we can have more than five people there. <laughs> yeah, right. So, Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Anyway, do you have any releases coming out? Um, nothing with a release date. I mean, I'm still plugging away on that full length album, but I, I have no idea when it's going to be done. And every once in a while, I'll. I'll do something from home. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't have anything official and solid to announce except just stay tuned. <laughs> nice. Right on. All right, Marina, Christopher, what are you doing over there in that sexy little studio you got going on there? something more than this holding back even though I really want that kiss sometimes I think I'm not good enough like maybe I put you off but then you hold my hand I think I understand the frowns in our faces that Laughing at ourselves with the mess we made Then you hold me close and you say to me We're just a couple of human beings Human beings We're human beings Looking back At all the time I thought was wasted I don't regret I never could appreciate it I had to love a fool or two two. Before I could love a fool like you So let's take a nice deep breath 
and keep on looking ahead. Frowns on our faces start to fade. We're laughing at ourselves with the mess we made. Then you hold me close and you say to me, We're just a couple of human beings. Human beings. Then you hold me close and you say to me, We're just a couple of human beings. With such self doubt, the things that don't matter will all work out. As for now, I know I can count on you. The frowns on our faces start to fade. We're laughing at ourselves at the mess we made. When you hold me close and you say to me, We're just a couple of human beings. Human beings. And you hold me close and you say to me, we're just a couple of human beings. Human beings, we're human beings, human beings, human beings, human beings, human beings. Welcome to my mom's house. <laughs> um, I, I can't really hear you that much. Is there a way that you can turn up a little bit? Yeah, is that, that a little better? Yeah, that's way better. Okay, cool. Um, yes. So similar experiences to the previous ladies. I'm Marina. I play bass for the Blood Moon Orchestra. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you here. do. That's why we're here. Woo! Um, <laughs> and um so yeah, I remember the first week, my last gig that I had before the pandemic really hit was with uh, Samantha Boschnack. And that was mm -hmm. awesome. It was just like, I just, I just, I toured with Marina in New York and Washington DC. And like, I was feeling very, very accomplished, very high on my horse. I was getting ready to tour with my own band, Marina and the Dream Boats, to mm -hmm. performing arts centers. And so that kind of all just watched it kind of blow away. Right. And um, luckily, I was hanging out with Emily McVicker, and I think we, we kind of became codependent for a while. <laughs> <laughs> because we both realized, like, oh, our main source of income is gone. And so we, we created this project, Coffee and Ukes, where it was like, our goal was to try to make some income to, co to like, pay our rent. <laughs> totally. Um, I remember those. I used to share them all the time. And so we started, we just wanted to be, we wanted to be regular. We wanted to like be fun and just anybody, you know, we still believe in the transformative power of music, no matter, no matter what, how you get it. Um, and so then we were able to crowdfund an album and, you know, pay some bills. And um, I think most basically it paid for us to figure out how to update all our stuff to make the experience a little, a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. Um which I totally value and I now I have more skills going in life but um she has become quite successful on Twitch like mm -hmm. she's she's doing it she's like I don't know if I'll go back to just every gig I can get anymore uh, for well me, that's not a bad thing you've been doing I, pretty good too haven't you yeah I I it's interesting like it feels kind of lonely so I had to like psych myself up to do it. It's not the same excitement as performing with other people for oh, yeah. other people. So I think, and then I broke my foot in March. So I just like, Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to try to like bring that up and have a broken foot. Um, so I think moving forward with the streaming on Twitch, I'll try to invite people to play with me. So it's like, we get a one-on-one -on -one experience. It's so fun. But um, last summer, the Shoreline Arts Council had a battle of the bands, a virtual battle of the bands. So my band, we made a video in the driveway, of the five-person version of the, the Dream Boats, and we ended up taking second place. Nice. <laughs> so cute in like a hyper-local battle of the bands. So we actually have a live gig. The, 
the prize was supposed to include a spot at this summer's arts festival, but that's not happening. But they are doing um, concerts in the park in um, in Lake Forest Park. So July twenty. I told sent you the date. I forget what it is. July twenty eighth at Finkst Animal Park in Lake Forest Park. I actually have a live gig with my with my band. Um which is exciting and outside which has always been my favorite kind of my favorite performances have always been like the ones funded by cities that are free for people to come those that's the the vibe is very nice on those um you have always have new faces just walking yeah. by and coming by and like yeah it's a totally different audience than what and not so insular right mm -hmm. so Nice. So I feel lucky, but you know, I'm back to, I got a, like a, a part-time job, which I haven't had a, like an office job in years. So, but it's a regular paycheck after a year of really uncertain time. So I'm readjusting what my goals are. What, totally. do I want to, what do I want to take every gig that comes along? If I can fit it in my schedule, do I want to spend all that admin time figuring that schedule out? I don't know. Um, but I sure miss playing with all of you. And I got to play with Marina for Ahum's uh, uh, Le Filet Luo's quartet. That was fun. That was I fun. saw that. I totally watched. <laughs> I totally watched. I, I, it was that the one that just was with um, Earshot? Yes. And then they played the Susan, Susan show after? Yeah. That was, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. awesome. Oh my gosh! When they played the second part of the concert, we're all sitting there and like crying because some other people they were. I all, cried were too. <laughs> I totally <So>. did. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know if I was if it was like his. I just like how he writes. I like his songs. Like his songs make me cry. And his first show, same thing mm -hmm. happened. I was so overwhelmed, I started crying. And like at the end, you can't help but like sing along you know and even on the second even on this one he did the same thing to me it was so beautiful but i mean i think was even more overwhelming for me was seeing all my friends up there like seeing all these people that i know and that i love and it was just like it was so inspiring it was inspired mm -hmm. right locally written music played by local local professional musicians well and that that's a good point you know how how beautiful, vibrant, and welcoming the scene is in this city. Yeah. Um, I always say that I feel really inspired in Seattle. It doesn't feel a small city. And even though I think I know everyone, it's never true. There's always somebody that they don't, they don't give that much. They live here or there and they come on and they go, what, who are you? Oh yeah, she, yeah, she plays blah, blah, blah forever. And he, I'm still meeting amazing musicians. And it's not only on the scene, of jazz, but also rock, classical, songwriting. It's pretty amazing. So yeah, yeah. we need we need to remember and, and you know appreciate that because it's mm -hmm. not a given in any city for big or for whatever history they have. So hey guys, let's take care of that ecosystem. It's pretty pretty awesome, Seattle. Well I, I just it. think even moving forward, trying to figure out a way to get greater appreciation. I mean, I think that because people haven't been able to do anything that they'll be willing to pay more money to go out and do things now. And I know that like lots of people haven't had work, but there are also a bunch of people out there who do have money and will spend money on you and your art. Well, I would say, you know, sometimes it's not about more money. Sometimes it's just about actually getting the part that you mm -hmm. own. Uh, so mm -hmm. it comes down also to negotiation with venues. It comes down to also, I mean, tipping it's good and it's fun, but tipping it's not a fair uh, way of no. you know, giving value. So oh, no, even if it's course. a $5 cover, like I remember Sea Monster tried and at some point they stopped because I, I don't know, probably it didn't work. I don't know, but I was happy. I don't care because I put the money anyway in the pit jar. But I mean, maybe we should be always, you know, like we say 15 to 20% for the waiter. Oh. So same thing with a cover for the music. Well, raising the um, expectation of your value as an artist, right? I had a salesman say to me a long time ago, I used to work at the Radisson and SeaTac, 
he's a salesman. He traveled all around the world. He said, you place your value on you by what you tell people you're worth. Yeah. And so if you sell somebody, if you lowball somebody or say you'll do something for free, well, then you're saying you're not worth anything. But if you tell them that you're a hundred bucks an hour and they'll be like, oh, she must be the shit. So they're like, all right, I'll pay you a hundred bucks an hour. Right. And so like the idea is that you place your value. And I think that it's just been instilled for so many years to just take what you can get or. And from the other side, totally. Sorry it, to interrupt. From the other side, it's proven. And I was, I, you know, podcast has been another thing of a uh, pandemic that I kind of rediscovered podcast mm -hmm. while I walk or I do my, my gardening. Um, there was a study about two bottles of wine. One cost $10 and the other one cost $100. And what happens when you change the labels, mm -hmm. the experience that the customer has, yeah. it's, it's really amazing because so, everybody so finds much better than $100 bottle. So look from how many sides the value is important. It's not only yeah. we as musicians, <clears throat> we need to be valued because people also give value to things with money. Agree. And if something costs nothing, the value, it's nothing. Exactly. Oh, it's beautiful, blah, 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 but it costs nothing. Oh, yeah, it's like air. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, for free. Also, yeah. I would like to change a little bit when we have the creative process and your home, writing music and having your own journey up and down. And it's worth it, blah, blah, blah. That, that's one thing. But then when you go to stage and you go to a venue or you go to a festival and you never shape a gig, this is a service you are giving mm -hmm. to someone. This is not art. At that very moment, you're not speaking about art. You are giving a service, and for a service, there's a feed. That simple. Yeah. Leave the word art for yeah. when you create. Yeah. And then when you negotiate or you talk about business, we need to learn from the business people and the business world. And that's where, where I'm learning right now. I'm like, okay, this yeah. is not a favor. This is not, I'm actually giving a service. It's something people cannot touch. Yeah. It's something, you know, it's difficult sometimes, but it is a service because people consume music daily. So, every day. Every day. Every day. I like that mentality that when we're gigging, we're providing a service. Yes. We need to change a little bit that. Yep. That, that even, mentality. Oh, totally. And even, you know, because then and it provides an emotional experience as well for the listener. Mm -hmm. right so there's value in what it is that they're giving you because they're receiving something emotional in return right so it's like and if you say yeah but how can you value that with money i'm like well i do pay bills with money if i was considered <laughs> differently as an artist it's like oh no you give you 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 are an emotion that tamer or you know harmonizer you you don't have to pay bills <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm like, okay fine. Not even that, I, mean, I don't like money <laughs> but you know even though it's about emotion i don't care it's a service it's, it's an hour and a half of that and it's true the trickiest part is that our means are actually emotions so you know and when it's emotion like when you're a teacher or, or when you are a caregiver it's not what they pay you you do it with love you do it with right involving yourself in it so money you know money what is money when you're putting your life and your soul into something like yeah so that's a tricky part right different hats but we well, know how to no, go but i mean the hats, idea that we? people pay a psychologist to get help for their mental health you know music is a way <laughs> music's a way cheaper version of a much more effective at least at the moment yeah, <laughs> for, totally. for an hour you forget <laughs> <laughs> right. I have a new dream of um, thinking of the business, treating this like a business. And we're at home. All all these media things still need music behind them. They still need. Right. So I would like to, because I met some people in Alaska that created an Alaska collective. So they don't have to individually as artists front the expense to apply for all this stuff. They have a nonprofit collective, especially for in indigenous and. Uh, Yes. Presenting performers. I would love to create something yes. like that in Seattle. Yes, Marina, create it, please. <laughs> yes, collective. I love the word, please. It's so hard uniting musicians, but I am down. I think we need to keep trying because you're right. If we share the information, if we share the network, yes, well, we are like, stronger. I want to follow example of some place like Jazz Ed that has like grant writers and it's an actual nonprofit, but um, that would be, maybe that will be my my long long-term 
long-term goal. I'm down. <laughs> Have you thought of the business name yet, Marina? What's the, what's the name? I don't know. No. No, you haven't thought of it yet. I just wondered. I'm like, did you get the name? <laughs> no. But that's what that's what I would like to do because I'm really interested in music placements because as musicians, like, if something were to happen to us, we can't perform. There's, it's really hard to take care of ourselves. And if we have like royalties coming in that we can get a guaranteed, that's like our pension. That's like our 401k or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I think that'd be helpful to a lot that's of That's kind of my dream too, is to be able to just make music, make money from music that I've written, you know, make music as a songwriter. That's, that's actually my dream. Cause I know that one day I'm not going to be able to perform anymore. So why not? write hits from the couch <laughs> you know, and, and have a have a, a, a more streamlined way to, to make that money and marina is right there's um, music to be played many places and apps and devices so it, it's about oh, getting yeah. these connections and sharing them in a collective way i think that that's really beautiful marina and i think it's possible uh, i think it just takes a small group of people working at that level together and, and it's and from there endless possibilities i'm sure good point Great idea <laughs> yay but let's do it we'll figure it out we'll do it mm. the blood moon collective <laughs> yeah right could be yeah. there you go there's the name <laughs> yeah i mean we've been asked to do a bunch of shows with through um is it loud swell now um mm -hmm. and they've been doing like a lot of live performance shows and i've been seeing some of the musicians on there make really great money, right? I mean, have you guys, I mean, I haven't watched all the shows. Have all of you guys done a show with them? I know Katrina did a couple with them. Anybody else do a show with them this year? I, I haven't, a I'd like to, but I haven't. Nice. Like if, I, if I had, it was regular at that. It's like building an audience on Twitch. Like you built a Patreon audience. It's, mm -hmm. it's very similar, but no, I haven't done Loud Swell yet. Well, I did. Like the Royal Room events go through them, whatever they used to be called. No, totally. So you just did that show that you did with Aham, right? Because that's how I watched it, right? But I'm just wondering if you guys have done solo shows. I, I mean, I think Katrina did pretty well. I think she did like... No, but that wasn't, that wasn't Loud Swell. That was your shot YouTube open, I believe, only. And yeah, that was I, your shot. Yeah, but I think it was uh -huh. your shot and Loud Swell working together, I think, I think is really... I don't know. We didn't get tips or anything. I don't think they put any... I think the tips were only direct to... I mean, you know what I mean? It's different. We didn't have that banner. You should usually not mm -hmm. have the banner. Back in October, I did one at, at the Royal Room that was Loud Swell, though. So Yeah, the staycation. Have... Yeah, because Royal Room, they make their own productions, too. Well, yeah, there's there's many ways of doing it, and what what marina was saying it's about building content and being solid no and it's a good way because I, uh, I think the live stream is opening uh one more possibility to the live concert so you go on tour and your audience from seattle can see you when you are in portland or in new york mm -hmm. or while you are recording you can do a crowdfunding from the studio so i think the tool is really valuable um it's gonna yeah. shift a little bit but combined with the live for crowdfunding then connecting with your audience so directly on real time. I think that's that's a tool that we are kind of rediscovering now. How you get to them, depending. Yeah. I mean, Marina, it's, it's, it, it, she's succeeding a lot on, on Twitch. And I guess it's about being regular. How, how do you think you got that, Marina? How, is, how does that happen? Oh, we got less than a minute. We got less than a minute and Katrina just showed up. <laughs> hey. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, we have less than a minute, but do, do y'all want to jump back on when we, uh, you know, when it runs out?
so I got my skin checked out a couple weeks ago and they found um, melanoma, two oh. spots, and it's stage one. So it's not like, you know, it's not like it's really bad, but it's still, it's like the bad skin cancer. So I'm um, out of all the skin cancers. It's not the good one. <laughs> so I got two spots taken out today and they like, I'm going to have, I'm going to have two long scars like this long, even though it was like this tiny of a spot. So that was earlier. And then the pain started setting in. Um, mm. Yeah. So that's not cool. So anyway, no. get your but you're done. Checked. You're done. Now healing, healing time. It's okay. They did it today? already. What's that? Is that just today? That was today. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, I was just, I'm glad it's done, but oh man, yeah. yeah. Don't, feel the, don't feel the need to do do anything right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I've been like on the couch trying to, you know, keep it up. I had a couple mm -hmm. lessons, but that's, you know. Oh my gosh. You know, doing the best I can. <laughs> oh. Um so anyway, I think we were gonna continue with Blood Moon. With yeah. the, Marie. Yeah, Michelle, did you have actual interview questions for us? I guess when I saw the timer starting to run out, I'm like, are, are we answering? No, just pretty much, it was pretty much just like what you're doing, what you've been Checking doing, in. <laughs> music. You said all the things, you said all the things. I mean, yeah. yeah, you're all professionals here. You're like, this is what I've been doing. This is blah, blah, blah. This is where you can find me, blah, blah. Yeah. No, no, you know, but it, got part, it was everybody just did what they were supposed to do. Okay. It's, ca it's casual. <laughs> And yeah. people are more than welcome to jump in and ask questions themselves as well. I mean, we're just kind of sitting here hanging out, talking, really. Sharing about my existential dread, you know. So, yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? And I just have to brag that um, Ron is going to be my sister-in-law. That, that, that's real, then. It, it, it your is brother? real. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to be sisters. <laughs> so <Wow. it's> <laughs> That was my brother you saw. <laughs> beautiful. Wow, well, congratulations right to everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. I get another sparkly sister. So. Great. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's a good, yeah, good fit <laughs> for everyone. It's good. I have a question. No. Eric has a question. Is there going to be an outdoor show under a full moon? Did you hear him? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah we all we all heard well i actually i actually reached out to marshall from marshall law band oh yeah yeah and asked them about their little thing that they're they're pretty much they have a trailer that you can hook up to a truck <laughs> where you can drive around playing you just get a generator and they would they did a they did a whole series of shows last year and i guess fremont arts council donated it to them and so I asked him, like, well, how much would it be to rent it? And he said, oh, well, you can rent it. And then I was like, he's like, or we could just do a show together. What do you guys do? Yeah. I was like, uh -huh. What do you guys do? Well, I mean, I think he knows what we do, but he's like, so what it, maybe it was more like, what it do? It was probably more like, what it do? And I'm like an old lady. I'm like, what, is it, what do you do? <laughs> what do you mean, what does it do? We play in a band. I know, totally. We get these things called instruments and then <laughs> microphones and we make noise. Yeah, it's like, what did we do? do it? Like, hey, let's do, it, let's do a show. Wait, this weird thing yeah. called women music. Right? Yeah, right. But I was like, I'm like, I have to talk to everybody in Blood Moon. I'm like, do we do shows with guys? It would open it up to it would open it up to a whole new audience of people, that's for sure. Marshall I mean, Well, I mean, men participate in the improv part, right? That's it's usually, I mean, from the shows I've been to, it's like the the featured act is a, a female-led mm. act, but then mm -hmm. men come up and improvise mm -hmm. during yeah, that, right. the jam part, so. Right. So, yeah, of course, and they can yeah. rotate in. Yeah, totally, so. Not like no boys allowed. Or right. It's just <laughs> us women, us powerful women are the ones fucking leading it. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we probably wouldn't let people come up and sit in and jam. I mean, it would yeah. only be like a. No, we wouldn't. We really wouldn't. We we couldn't. 
I mean, not in this oh, not yeah, in yeah. situation, I right? Mean, Technically, we could have a spot for people to plug in their mic. Oh, have totally. them bring their own mic, or we could get, I, I don't know, there's like microphone condoms that I'm hearing about. They're going to call the karaoke bars and find out where they get their supply of microphones. Yeah, condoms. exactly. <laughs> I played, I played on one of those tiny cruise ships and everyone, we had to submit our vaccine cards and then we also had to take COVID tests and they're so, I wonder when they'll just be available to everybody for anything. Mm -hmm. Right. So quick. And yeah. Well, I already, my friend told me today that she had tickets for a game and there was an area for people uh, with two shots, like already vaccinated. There were certain areas that where they can stay and no mask. And she was like, ah, I had to reset my second shot so I cannot join that area. So they are starting to do that. So hopefully, um, yeah, if people is okay, like disclosing this, inf this information, uh, it makes it easier to share and, and go back. That's for sure. So, so yeah. I guess I just saw on Amazon, they do have like little... I don't know, little <laughs> covers, little blue. They they basically look like the blue face masks, but they're for a microphone. And oh, it doesn't really show very good, but bring your like, mask, mic ma mask. Bring your mic mask, mask. mask. Yeah. and or we could have and a two hundred pound. Yeah, something something like that. I, I kind of I don't know. I just sort of spaced and forgot. Like oh, we can't just have people blowing their germy droplets all over no, our microphone you don't know and it's and that's like part of it too it's like this part of the re it's just yeah you got to think about these things now mm -hmm. and you know then somebody coming up and playing on your piano marina you wouldn't want that you want somebody to come up and play your bass not I my mean, favorite situation you know right. what i mean not unless you know uh, but if you're speaking about something like really particular like taking a, a float that one trailer and I think yeah, that's totally. pretty close. And totally. if, if I see a friend, like I see mm -hmm. somebody I love and I want to, you know, hey, yeah, they might give and play. Like I see yeah. Curtis yeah, yeah. or I see Joe, that, that's, that's yeah. me deciding me personally. For real. Giving my instrument to a friend. But yeah. open, open my something like that in these times, I don't think it's worth it. I think it's no. just yeah. bringing that joy and that situation. We used totally. to have in venues, having it outdoors, and even better if you yeah. have it as a parade. I think that's so much yeah. better. A little <laughs> <food> mobile. <laughs> well, well, that's just, a great idea. Well, I just keep thinking about like the next time I'm even going to be comfortable like doing that. I know. Well, I know. Like, I'm like even smoking a joint with somebody, yeah, right? Yes. Like just, uh -uh. you know, sharing it. Hey, have a sip of my Wearing drink. a mask like, when you go to a hospital. Or yeah. when you go to a plane, I like take um, temperatures at a children's clinic, and ever since Monday with the new CDC thing, parents are so much like there's a shift, and they're so much meaner, and they're like, I thought we don't have to wear masks anymore. I'm like, we uh, are at a place for immunocompromised children. Ew, yeah, right. You know, hospitals is full of hospital. viruses, and yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I'll I'm gonna be ordering like one of those thermometers for your forehead. Um, and, and I'm gonna make you know my students wear masks because I haven't I haven't done really I just did my first in person lesson like the other day, so mm -hmm. I'm starting to like you know do that because there's some some kids that I've been teaching that don't want to take lessons or they don't want to start until you know yeah. I see them in person. Yeah. So I'm like okay, well now that I'm vaccinated, at least I can make these steps to be able to like make some more money and be safe about it yeah you know totally thermometers yeah i'm not goodness. i'm not going back i i was talking to ari about it the other day and i was like i'm mm -hmm. not coming back until september i'm gonna still i still need to go out to boston to visit my brother and i plan on oh doing how that is your summer. brother may i ask how is um, he's doing he's doing better um he's talking what a, what a situation some of it's gosh. gibberish um mm -hmm. he um is it just in rehabilitation right now and um he's doing pretty good he got a brain scan done and they said there was a lot of brain scarring and he probably wouldn't be able to move his right side and then like two days later he started moving his right leg and then like a week after that he started moving his right arm so it's going to be a long recovery but he's like he's doing good all things considered 
right? Wow. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I, I've, so been, I've been reading some of the updates, you know, that your sister-in-law has been totally putting up sharing. Uh, yeah. Good. Um, yeah. But I just thank you really... for donating to that, by the way. I appreciate that. Well, that was really of kind. Course. It's, it's thank you to anybody who can... donates, donated. I'm Impossible. not sure hundred percent everybody who did, but if you're, if you're one of the people, thank I'm you. just glad that he, he's uh, recovering. It's going to be this is crazy. And in case you guys so, don't know what Maureen is talking about, my my 36-year-old brother who actually lives in Boston, he had a stroke. So it was like crazy. But I'm trying to, I'm getting back there this summer. So I'm not, te- I'm not going back to teaching until September. Plus I want to wait and see what happens. I really don't know if yeah. June 30, <laughs> I, I don't know if June 30th is going to happen. Like I don't, nice. or maybe it is. Maybe Inslee's just going to be like, fuck it. Let's just do what the rest of the country's doing. Fuck it. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Because he's just like, I'm done listening to people. He's like, fuck it. Well, yeah. I mean, we went to, we met at Reposado at um, Gasworks on Sunday because now they're doing that every Sunday. I don't know if you talked about that. I did a little bit. I did. Yeah. And it just felt really weird. Like, I mean, I took my mask off. I mean, we were outside, but it was just like this weird, like, are we, should we be doing this? Like, is this. <laughs> You know, like you, Michelle, you were like, well, I guess if we're going to get COVID, we're all going to get COVID together. You know? Totally. Yeah. But they, they had a, yeah, with the whole, like they made it, they weren't going to let us plug in our own mic. Uh, I, I don't know if you talked about that. No, but, I didn't. I didn't say that. So, so talking about that sort of jamming, improv whatever, like having people come up for a, a gig you know he had his his mic and he was like you know if you want to sing you have to sing out of my mic i don't i don't want you changing anything up he's like i just don't want to deal with it like just if you're not going to jam with us and you're not going to vibe with us then you're not going to vibe and i was like i understand what you're saying but you have to go with the times i'm like i'm not ready i'm not ready yeah. to go sing on I'm someone else's that. mic okay. you know Plus when he had like a few other people sing on, I'm like, I don't, I, I am so not ready. Like the mask mandate just lifted like that. That doesn't mean I'm going to go like suck face with like everybody or kiss on everybody. (laughs) That's what it feels like. Right. You get that close and personal on a microphone. It's like, yeah, you know, um, but, oh yeah, you've smelled some of the microphones at oh, some of the venues, just, right? Oh, horrible! <laughs> That's something I want to erase from my memories. <laughs> so, like, I, uh, so like, so, but then he did. Never thought about us. that. Sorry, <laughs> I never, I never seen. It's so bad. I, I just crusty. realized. It's wow, that mildew smell. <laughs> right. So then he reached out to us, like uh, both me and Michelle separately and was like, oh, actually I talked to the sound guy and there is a way that you can plug in your microphone. So if you want to come jam, you know, so it it was good that he like looked into it because these are different times. These aren't times where it's like, no, you can't bring your own mic. Like, I, I mean, there was a time when you could do that, you know, no, just use mine. But now it's not that it's not that way at all. No, no, you have to create space for that be you know to be safe mm-hmm. totally yeah so plus they can just turn the volume down and you can use the same cable but your mic i don't think it's a such a big deal no, I, mean, I think he just whatever. didn't know how to do but it i think he just didn't know how it's to do okay it. i think if he realized <laughs> and came back like yeah saying something that's what matters at the end of the day but yeah it's not nice it's okay yeah weird right. times weird times look at that beauty over there Hi, Maybe. and you are hundred percent. So, Marina, Christopher, I wanted to when you were talking about your video that you did, where you won second prize. That video went viral, didn't it? Are you on? You're, you're muted. Oh. Down. You, that that video went viral, didn't it? And I meant to ask you that when you said it. I was like, didn't that video go viral? Yeah, like it got what tens of thousands, but that's because I think because um, Ijoma shared it, and mm-hmm. she's so like she's a star in my world. Like my biggest flex yeah, I know is who that she I is. know her and Lindy. Like, mm. um, 
So, <laughs> so yeah, that did go viral, and like it's still getting some views, and people have sent me really nice things because of it. So that was the video um, we made in my driveway. <laughs> nice. It was really cute. I loved what you did with it. You were playing at first your, you know, ukulele, then you ran away, got the tuba. <laughs> <laughs> it was cute. I loved it. Since, I was like, yeah, girl. Since then, a band asked me to record too, but I was like, no. No, that was, that was, <laughs> that's hilarious. But why not? Are you still learning how to play it or are you not playing? One. You're not learning anymore? I don't right. Know to, and so I haven't played it since high school. Like I used to play in high school because I didn't like orchestra, but not the Blood Moon Orchestra. I didn't want to play. School <laughs> orchestra. You disappeared again. Why is it dis going away? Hello? Maybe I'm too loud. Can you hear me? Yeah. I think I get too mi close to the mic and then it freaks out. Uh, gotcha. But I have been enjoying um, exploring other ways of writing music and like recording music other than just being the bass player. Like the video I sent you has my new favorite thing my my digital auto harp <laughs> oh, cool. looks like it's from star wars <laughs> is she Disapp muted you disappeared again <laughs> but we want to hear your auto harp. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <Nope. laughs> I'm going to change it. I think there you are. There you go. I have to change the settings for every different meeting software I use. So I don't think I changed it, but um, this is my new favorite thing. Oh, let's see. Let's do, let's do some bossa nova. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's gonna be cool. It's really quiet though. It's like that. <laughs> and then you play your your notes. <laughs> so, the video I sent you has that. <laughs> Nice. I love it. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Cause like we have the whole stu our whole studio is another instrument that we can utilize. So I'm trying to get more into that. But um Marina, you wanted to ask you asked me to talk about I did online. I did. I did. I would I like did. to hear I... what you did too. So um for Twitch, I Emily and I Emily McVicker and I did a bunch of research and we watched YouTube videos and like how to grow your Twitch. Not all of them apply to music. A lot of them apply to, you know, playing video games. Mm -hmm. And right when we both got on, there was a flux of like musicians joined right after, but it's all also, it's all about being regular, like having set a set schedule that you stick to and creating ways to interact like, um, uh like what what would some things that i would do uh well i i figured out all this like programming for them to request songs and then like tip and then emily she has her top tippers name displayed on the screen and the, if someone's still there at the end of the month she'll make them a caricature and so it's like creating weird incentives huh. again uh creating your own community within twitch wow but so it wasn't it wasn't as easy as me to sustain because um i think it made me like like i said earlier it made me feel a little lonely and it made me like face that a little more like oh these are all really lonely people as well oh no like uh, that was hard <laughs> yeah we all were. but the beauty of it you know when someone's weird at a gig when there's someone weird dude getting too close to you or like wouldn't stop talking to you on the computer you can just be like gone <laughs> Bye. That's great. Yeah, I, the more you talk about it, I mean, it sounds amazing. Like if you are able to do it 
regularly, but I'm afraid for someone, someone like me who might just post something every two or three months, kind of like my YouTube channel. I mean, honestly, I don't mm -hmm. have a lot going on on there because I post something maybe once every few months. I think the key is that you keep it, you know. Going live is so much easier than recording and editing stuff though personally for me. And so then I took that spirit. I, I tried Reddit live, which is pretty interesting. I've, I've gone, I've had people who, like message me from who's worked on cruise ships with me or like went to school with me. Like I saw you on Reddit and, um, and then TikTok I recently, cause oh. I have a, I have a video that has a million views. It's not of music. It's of a squirrel, but <laughs> I was able to go oh, live on TikTok. So just trying to, since I know the format now, just trying to embrace what what's going to be the the next thing mm -hmm. um and i love tiktok i got addicted to tiktok uh, this pandemic so it's fun <laughs> well it's fun you know and there's tons of like uh interactive stuff on there for for people to do and there's tons of information on how you can create videos on there as well like people people who are creating are like hey you want to create this is how you do it and it's just like a, a you know it's like a little free three minute video and you too can tick tock but i love the idea of how it creates production yeah right? like well, how do you how do you how can you produce this whole entire thing now with cameras oh right? yeah i have and fancy visual, audio visual shit. I, have, I mean it's like, fancy stuff y'all oh marina i told you that i have three cameras and a gimbal now if anybody needs something filmed Ooh. Nice. Yeah, you, you, you've got the gear. That's so awesome. I'm um, still a, a one person household a with responsibilities um, uh, on my shoulders. So I'm not able to invest much money yeah. on gear. Did you, have, did you apply for any SBA loans? <laughs> No, <laughs> you should. You should. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I applied for some grants and stuff. So to me, paperwork is my biggest nightmare. That's the other thing. Mm. Like, ah, oh. but uh, I would happily hire you, especially because to me, working with people that you know do some video or or audio recording and they are musicians, it's so much better for music videos. Mm -hmm. And again, sharing resources and me hiring you better than me buying a camera and you mm -hmm. buying a camera and the other one, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I think that's the mentality a little bit. It's like, okay, I know Marina has cameras now. Marina, can you come to my backyard next weekend? And mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll totally call you because I do. So you were talking about Reddit. I thought about it and Twitch and uh, my situation is the following. I, uh, I feel a big, uh, like stage fright on on this thing's life. I don't enjoy the camera mm -hmm. and the unknown and that open, uh, I don't know. I, I feel really insecure, lonely, but watch and observe. It's a weird, it's something personal. And um, I don't really enjoy that mental live stream itself, even when it's organized and somebody else is in charge. Um. I've been enjoying more the recording part and editing video. I love filming and I love editing. I love my computer hit to do with my so it's so interesting how it goes with your character, how you are, your mood. Um, to me, Patreon gives me a couple of things I cherish a lot. One is uh, control over the final product, mm. even though my let's see my approach is like being real i want to record it in one day and edit the next day in two three days i make the 20 minutes content for the month okay but i'm in control of what i'm giving away and who is watching it and instead of aiming for one million views if i have 100 people on patreon i don't need one million views and i'm fine with that i need 100 really really loyal followers i am also that that you know that maybe it's psychological border of, of being 41 is like uh i don't really want to update i start feeling like my grandma never had email and she's still alive she's like i'm not I'm, i don't want wi-fi she doesn't she never got a computer she never got wi-fi she never got netflix so it's fine sometimes in life you say you know what this is <laughs> i'm not going for the <laughs> And in a way, it's been good going into engineering and editing and video because I love all that side in music. And I think it gives me more control when I get into a studio next time. Um, 
Mm -hmm. I have an 18 year old and he's into TikTok and he's a producer and a beautiful musician. So I learned from him and he's actually talking a little similar as you, Marina, that you're younger than I am. And, uh, and you're right. This is the language, the language that is going to be spoken in arts and music and communication. I'm going to need more people like you, Marina, around me, because sometimes mm -hmm. I rather getting, you know, the, getting surrounded by the people that really know the language and, and I do my thing. I'm going to be the, the well, the people that don't want to change, the people that are that can easily just stay doing what it is that they're doing rather than like adapting to what's actually happening for the future and, and where music is going. You know, artists have so much more access to people around the world in a way over mm -hmm. the last 20 years than they have ever in mm -hmm. its time. And, and continuing to like learn and create and build skill sets is pretty much where it's at right now. It's right? crazy. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I yeah. just love the, the fact that, you know, being my age, seeing the 18 years old, how easy for them is that language. Oh, yeah. And so uh, I think that crossing over generations and styles, it's really important. And seeing how the people, these, these new musicians and hip hop musicians, they share information. They share, they, they tell each other about publishing and how to sell the beats and how to make a song and what about the form? It's so interesting how openly they share information. I'm learning a lot about uh, new generations and how they communicate because I'm like a dinosaur. I feel like a freaking dinosaur. <laughs> I am so glad you too. I, 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 I don't have Twitch or TikTok or anything like that. I didn't even try. I, don't, I never tried TikTok. Like, okay. but, but I did, I actually, you know, along with the recording at home, I actually did start, I, well, I mean, it's only like two or three, but um, <clears throat> I've learned how to just really easily in iMovie make, you know, little music videos at home, even just filming them on my iPhone, you know, editing them in iMovie and look, it's like, I wrote something, I made a video for it, I put it out, you mm -hmm. know, by myself. In fact, actually, Katrina was in one of them. <laughs> she was in one yeah. of the videos, um, you know, and it's kind of, and it is cool. And I agree, Marina, about having the uh, control over everything really feels nice. However, I have to confess to be able to keep doing this. I will have to invest in some more new equipment, like a better laptop. I'm just using a all of you get SBA loans, because if you buy any stuff like that, it's and you mark it down, it's forgivable. That's I got this laptop. I got this camera. <laughs> Marina, Marina, you okay? Know. Yeah. Well, I don't we know need much to about talk. that. I, right now, I'm just yeah. trying. I'm just trying to get a home loan. I'm just trying to buy a house up in here. But maybe <laughs> this is different. This is specifically for income you have lost during the pandemic. Oh. So it's it's oh. yeah. <laughs> just they're 100 forgivable loans is what they are. So what it's kind like of a loan is it? <laughs> SBA small like small business association. SBA. Okay. My I've mom, more... my mom's got a ton. I got five thousand dollars. She's wow. she got like fifteen thousand. Okay. <laughs> nice. No, that's no, the way no. to do it because you're actually making it work and you're actually producing with that gear. So it, it's totally that's the reason why they are um, supporting that, and we need to use it. You're right, Marina, and you have done it, and it's beautiful that you share it because I'm. I'm lazy when it comes to paperwork and grants and all that. Yeah, but if someone says, no, I already did it and it works, Marina, A, B, C. Okay, I go and I do it. And the, big, the, hardest part, the hardest part is you have to put your income by month and like what your income would have like was. Uh, so you prove that you've lost and like, yeah, that sucks. But it was totally worth it. So uh, I'm not, I'm also not sure if I can track all that easily, but um yeah you know, it's but it's i guess it'd be worth it i don't know right now i have to admit right now like like i i wasn't joking i actually i'm trying to buy a house right now Yay. <laughs> so I'm like another job so i have like my full-time job i have trying to continue to do music and now i have trying to buy a house and it's just been kind of bananas but you know i but one thing i am trying to do is find a house where i can make music like either have a whole separate room or even and, or some homes that have like a workshop in the backyard you know somewhere where i can make music without other people impacting me and without me impacting other people so that's like a big part of it it's like it's just the two of us and we're probably not going to have any kids but it's like we need at least three bedrooms or a basement mm -hmm. or some kind of i moved in with my boyfriend and we put the bed in the living room so we could each have our own bedroom ah! <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> perfect. it's perfect that. 
That's so yeah, good. Money, <laughs> you need, yeah, money, you need redesign space. your life. <laughs> like he needs to be able to paint. I need to be able to make music, you know? So I don't nice. know. It's, it's, it's just really interesting thinking about what I need in a home. And yeah, music is a big part of that. So, <laughs> you know, but I realized, you know, and another thing the pandemic's taught me is there is a time for everything. And sometimes sure. as heartbreaking as it is, sometimes music does have to go on hold or on the back burner mm -hmm. um, because there's, there are other things in our, in our lives. But once I did start making music again, I, I definitely felt more fulfilled and less depressed. So that was good. <laughs> but I think I really learned how to be patient with myself mentally and physically, um, not just because of the pandemic, but also I had a, a back injury as well. <laughs> so that actually six months later, I'm still not 100% recovered from it. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's just a big lesson and message I need to have for anybody, honestly, it's like be gentle with ourselves. Don't yeah. feel like, you know, I honestly felt like garbage when I saw people cranking out like not just song after song, but like album after album, like during my worst, darkest days, I'm like, why can't I do that? And then I realized, you know, it's just, it's not the same for everyone. I have to take care of what I need to take care of right now. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I need to lay on my bed for a few months, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that's, that's what we're doing. And uh, the mute, but the music will always be there. So yeah, I just, yeah, this was, this whole pandemic is a very big lesson in patience on all different levels. Mm -hmm. I think I just, I, you know, I, uh, I'm finally starting to like, there, after my mom died like six years ago, I've just been like a fucking hot mess. And I feel like this last year, because I quit drinking and smoking cigarettes, um, I'm not, I'm, I'm like, finally found my way out of that you know like I was just like heading down this fucking spiral and it was funny because when like we were at Gasworks the other day and I actually stood up and I started dancing I was like I haven't like just kind of nonchalantly done that in a long time I haven't done that in like years and so I was like wow, this is like, I feel, I feel different now than I have in a long time, which has been really nice, even though it's been like super dark and fucking crazy. And I lost my fucking shit in like July. You know what I mean? I yelled at fucking Ari, my boss, for like fucking almost like a week. And like, thank God he was cool about it. You know what I mean? Thank God he is who he is, you know? But it was like, yeah, I fucking, I like lost my shit. And then pretty much after that, Ronnie is like, when I just was like, I'm just going to fucking lay down and like not get back up for a while. <laughs> you know? Lay down. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. It's all I'm going to do right now. Yeah, one breaks. Yeah. <laughs> busy fucking trying to like feel like anxiety ridden all the time. It was fucking crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> it feels so. scary to take a breath. Totally. And it's important recognizing when we have little, uh, little achievements. I've been uh, really being appreciative about that. You know, I did mm -hmm. that thing. Oh, I declared this little area right there. Mm -hmm. I did my taxes. That was a good one. Yeah. 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 Yes. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's like really giving myself some rewards, even if it's just stopping for a moment, acknowledging because it's sure. been hard this year. It's been hard finding that motivation to just keep going, waking up and um, yeah, and playing music or it, it's been really isolating. Um, and we need to go back slowly. It's fine. It's really totally. personal. It's a journey, but I think it's been a golden time because everybody was having like this. It's been the whole world. And that's really yeah. interesting. So yeah again how we step amazing. back yeah let's step back in our own way we don't need to do anything we don't mm -hmm. have to we we just need to really be ourselves and be ecological to our own rhythms i think that's the most important yeah. absolutely and be respectful with others you know that also i understood that there's been so many different reactions to the pandemic and so many different ways of expressing some people were feeling about their health, some others about their housing. Some other. So you talk to different people and it's a whole different story, mm -hmm. but it's a journey. So I think it's beautiful being part of that moment in society. I think it's interesting. Uh, everybody listens a little more. We are a little more anti-social now. So it's, 
this adjustment is gonna it's gonna take a while. But I'm I'm really curious. I love human behavior. I love humans in general. And I'm really curious about how we handle that. I think we've been doing pretty good, especially in Seattle area. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, community. I'm actually pretty proud of everybody. I've gone to the grocery store yeah. like twice in the last couple of days, and everyone is still wearing a mask. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. And I go to like PCC and Central Co-op. I don't go to like Safeway or QFC. I don't know how those places are, but like all the people at PCC and Central Co-op have been wearing their masks still, and I'm just like, I'm I'm down. And mm -hmm. they even have signs saying like PCC has a sign saying, hey, we're just going to go with what the CDC says, you know, you don't have to wear And mask. also, you know, all the community um, supporting local businesses and artists and all the fundraising totally. and the venues. It's Seattle in general. I did choose this, this city to live um, from very far away. Uh, mm -hmm. I could have chosen any other city once mm -hmm. I even decided U.S. and Mm -hmm. You know, I have a really big crisis back in my country right now of uh, migration. There's a Morocco opened their door yesterday. Mm -hmm. They just decided to open the door because they have a, a diplomatic problem with Spain. So they open the door and they say, everyone, borders are open and kids like unattended kids, families are looking for their kids and the kids cross the border to this one city in Africa that is Spanish. 9,000 people, and some of them went around the sea, hypothermia, and I think how a privileged immigrant I am. And uh, my struggle and my strife here, it's been real and it's been hard, but uh, I have so many more blessings to count and I'm so grateful for where I am, for how people have responded to my music, how people respond to the community, how so again, I, I'm really grateful. I know you, you're from here and there's a lot to, to, to fix and, and um, we have a lot to, to do in progress and in social equity. But to me as an immigrant and as a musician, I feel really blessed that I'm here today, the way I came to this country, the way I can work. So we have a lot and we have to appreciate it. Same with our lives. We do a lot of good things and we need to keep doing these good things. So let's appreciate them and spread them. Right. Thank you, Seattle. I, I wouldn't, yeah, won't get tired. Yay. Thank you all. Well, That's I'm so glad lovely. that you made Seattle our your home. Oh, we have gosh, less than a, we have all. less than a minute. Yay. I think that was a beautiful way to end that. I know. Can I, can I ask you gals a favor? Can I get a screenshot of the five of us here? Sure. Yeah. All right. Are we re here? I want to do it before this closes. Are you guys ready? <laughs> a smile or a sexy look? <laughs> Did you do it? I, I was just so. gonna stay there like that. <laughs> I've got us. I've got a screenshot. Oh my gosh! Everyone looks really happy. You need to get more. You need to get more. Here, here I'll do one more. 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 Okay, ready? All right. It's kind of funny. It's just kind of one of those things where it just kind of does. It. All right, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got one it. more in the picture. Yeah, one uh, more. <laughs> you guys are so fun. Okay. okay. Goodbye, everybody. The oh, yeah. the oh, the go. Ready? I don't know when to. One, two. It's lovely to see you all. Oh, yeah.